Hi everyone, this is Patty from Deep Space Sparkle. Now, if you've been teaching art to kids for any length of time, you know one of the biggest struggles in teaching children how to draw and paint is to encourage children to draw big. I mean, how many times have you sat down with your child or your students and embarked on a painting project, but the drawing was so small that the children couldn't even fit the paint inside their shapes? Well, stick with me because I'm going to show you how to get rid of that problem. And the first step is to get rid of this little thing. So in this video, I'm going to show you three ways that you can encourage your students to draw big. Tip number one, skip the pencil in favor of an oil pastel or crayon. That's right, everyone. The first step to encourage your students to draw big is to get rid of the pencil. Now I know that the pencil is highly associated with learning how to draw. But instead of the pencil, um, I'm gonna show you a couple of other techniques. Now, the reason why I like to get rid of the pencil is because look at this. It's this really tiny point. It's almost like the pencil is speaking to the child and it's saying to the child, draw as many tiny details as you can or draw super tiny because I'm tiny, I'm a lead and I'm tiny and pointy, so I want you to draw super small. That's what I think the pencil is telling the kids. Now, if you switch that out to an oil pastel, I think the oil pastel is telling the kids to draw a little bit bigger because they have to in order to get the shapes and the lines formed to a specific subject. So I'm gonna demonstrate a few things, but what I would suggest is to start with an oil pastel. Now, I know that can be a little smudgy and I know that not everyone loves them, but I tell you what, they sure do encourage kids to draw big. And I'm gonna give you a few examples in just a minute. Now, the alternative is, if you don't like the black lines, that's okay. Use a yellow line or use a blue line. It doesn't matter. The important thing is, is that the tip is really thick. So here's an example. Here is a Paul Clay fish that first graders did, actually some kindergartners too, so five and six year old kids. This is a nine by 12 paper and children used a black oil pastel and a white oil pastel to draw their fish. Now, if we start it with a pencil, most likely the children would have drawn a very tiny fish, which would have made the second part of the lesson, maybe the lesson that you're trying to teach, which is color theory, cool and warm colors, almost impossible to complete. Here's an example of a cat project based on Laurel Birch, which features a very large cat. The children start it with an oil pastel. This is the best way to do this lesson. So I wanna just give you an example. We actually used a container top, very similar to this, to trace, trace the face of the cat, just a plain circle. I tell you, that's gonna be tip number two, so stick with me. Now, children, when they're using a big, uh, broad tip like this, they're not focused on the little details. They're focused on drawing big shapes that go all the way across the paper. And the oil pastel just encourages that movement. So this is a project that is super easy for kids to draw. And then once they have this big drawing, they're able to um, paint a lot more freely and expressively. Tip number two, use the paper and finger placement to bring awareness to the paper size. I know that one sounded a little complicated, but if you're using a large paper or a small paper, you want the children to be aware of the paper size because we don't want children to draw a, a tiny little owl in the middle of this big piece of paper. So when I'm teaching students, I often talk about the top of the paper, the bottom of the paper, the left side and the right side. So in this particular painting of an owl, well, before I start the drawing uh, demo, I'll encourage kids to look at the very top of the paper and then maybe take their two fingers and make a little dot right where their bottom finger touches. And so they'll use that dot as an indicator to where to start drawing the top of the head. Another way to do it is you can tell the kids, go ahead and put your hand um, at the bottom of the paper with your thumb um, right aligned to the edge of the paper. And where your peak is, draw a little dot. So now they will have a dot on their paper so that when they're drawing the ear all the way down to the bottom of the body, they'll have a place to go to. It's kind of like a road map. Now, in case you're getting lost with all of these tips, don't worry, because I have a little handout for you that I created, kind of like a cheat sheet 
for three tips on how to get your kids to draw big, put this in your teacher binder so you can kind of keep being reminded of this as you're teaching drawing and painting. Now you can find the link to this uh, download in the description below. Now here's another one. This is a really simple uh, drawing, but if the children draw the vase super small, then it's going to be really hard to fill up the whole paper with these beautiful tulips. So one thing that I taught my students when I was doing this lesson with them is to take their finger and when they were drawing their vase to make sure that the, the bottom of the vase was a finger's width from the bottom of the paper. And then the hand placement, they had to put their hand on the bottom of the paper with their thumb kind of gently opened with their thumb attached to the bottom of the paper and this is where they started the top of the vase. So little hand gestures like that make a world of difference. Tip number three, use templates to get the party started. No matter how you feel about using templates in your art room, I tell you templates or tracers if you want to call them can be a magical solution. Take this example. I created these little crown templates a long time ago to help my students draw big portraits of themselves. Now, you can see how the children learn how to uh, cut and tra or trace and cut a template. So this little girl made a crown, but by using the crown as a marker, children then learned how to draw a big enough face so that they could color inside it. Now, take a look at this cow. Isn't this impressive? First graders did these cows and they're pretty big. To get the party started, I used a rectangle template. Now, children were encouraged not to touch the template, but to go around with a pencil or a light colored piece of chalk. A yellow chalk is perfect because they can wipe it away. And that's how they got the body of the cow. I have so many more templates and I encourage you to make these and keep them year after year. You only need about 20 or 25 per class. These are magical. These really help students build architecture drawings like castles or churches or cathedrals. These are one of the things that you're gonna be using the most. So make sure you have a stock of these on hand. Even decorative uh, templates like this, this is a fish template that I used for a clay dish for my kindergarten class, but also a color theory lesson for my second grade class. Sometimes the focus of an art project is not about the drawing. So it's not about the drawing of a flower in this case, but it's all about how to create tints and use value in artwork. So the template, for this flower template was used for both the color theory lesson and a clay lesson. So I've used templates from kindergarten all the way up to sixth grade, and I've used them in so many other situations as well. So if you'd like to see a video on how I used templates a little bit more deeper uh, dive into using templates, let me know in the comments below and I'll consider adding a new video. Here is a bonus tip for you. Just like the oil pastel encourages children to draw really big, guess what else does? A paintbrush. In this project, children used a small paintbrush and black tempera paint to draw this beautiful vase, a bowl of fruit, and then all of the decorative details behind it. When children use a paintbrush, they're encouraged to draw big. They can't draw small. The uh, brush just won't allow them to do it. So I hope you try these techniques. I would really love to see if these techniques help your students draw bigger so they can get to the really fun part, which is painting. So make sure you join our Deep Space Sparkle Dazzler Facebook group to show off your students' art and let me know which technique works best for you. Now, as always, if you love this video, share it with your friends, your teacher friends, and make sure to subscribe so every Tuesday and Thursdays, we put out a brand new video and by subscribing, you get a notification of when that new video has appeared.